M A X Hi everyone, I just wanted to make a quick follow-up video to my earlier video about the Kodak Advantix film drive scanner. Some lovely people in the comments were able to give me a copy of the Windows 98 drivers, which include a batch scan functionality. So those drivers that I showed in the earlier video were very limited because the scanner is really slow and they would only let you scan one photo at a time. So it made it sort of practically impossible to actually scan film in any volume. But fortunately for the Windows 98 version, they created a dedicated little piece of software for doing batch scanning. And so what I wanna do now is just run it and see how it goes. I can already see just looking at this that the user interface here is just so much more straightforward, which is really appreciated because although there was a certain kind of like, um, you know, turn of the century beauty to the old user interface, it was, it was a little bit difficult to navigate, I'm not gonna lie. So this is nice, it's just one screen from the looks of it. Um, so I have already put a film in the scanner, so. <laughs> the noises this thing makes is just, it just sounds terrible. It just sounds like it's gonna eat the film. And then, you know, from my experience in the first video, like, you know, scanning a roll of film or a couple of photos, it just sounds like, all right, I'm shredding your film, I'm shredding your film, I'm shredding your film, but then it comes out, it's a really good quality scan. So, uh, if whatever works, I suppose. Okay, cool. So I can see here that it's just letting me pick which pictures I wanna save. So maybe to start off, we'll just do a test scan and and just scan a couple of them. I'll, I'll just see if there's any. Okay, so if you click preferences or click help, it does nothing. So I'll select those. I would like to say hi. I wanna save them in, I mean, that's fine. My pictures in folder based on cassette ID. So picture, yep, oh, this is really useful. You can see they really took the feedback from the first version and just made a piece of software that just does the job rather than all that other stuff that was just wasn't necessary. Okay, well, I just whacked the enter key. Very weird button issue there. I don't know what that was at all. So, oh, that's cool to see. It seems to make the index print relatively quickly. Um, so maybe I, I should have just gone with an index print there. We'll see what happens. Well, I say relatively quickly. Of course, I mean very slowly. Amazing. This will take a long time. So I think what I'll do is I'll just let that percolate and uh, get back to it and we'll have a look at how it goes and then I'll try scanning a whole roll. These will look terrible on this display because I haven't even really properly set up the display drivers yet and it's just showing like 256 color modes, I think. So um, there won't be, yeah, I mean, maybe this is even less than 256 colors, but um, we'll have a proper look at that in a minute. But wow, that is so cool to see that it can generate an index print. And one of the things that's cool about this index print I can see immediately is that it hasn't cropped the images to the selected APS um, sizes. And that's a really cool thing because I, I, ideally this would scan the full frame and not apply the crops that you've selected when you're using the APS camera. Um, because, you know, really all that does is it crops the image and you're just throwing data away. And it would be great to actually have the full size frame, even though I didn't shoot with that intention when I was like a tiny little child, it would be great to have that full frame now. So adult me can choose to crop the images however I want, but we shall see when we scan the actual images and we'll open one of those up. It will look just as bad as this. Okay. Ah, uh, very cool. It's, it's quite beautiful in fact with this <laughs> limited <laughs> color presentation. It's really quite abstract. It looks almost like a tapestry or something like that. And I didn't know that um, my camera made tapestries when I was a kid, but in a way that's kind of better than what I thought it was doing. I thought it was just taking photos, but uh, no, this is cool. Let's have a look at them on a uh, real computer. They look really good. 
you can see that the index print is very low resolution, but that makes a lot of sense because obviously what you want is you want to get a very quick scan to see everything that's on the roll, have a look at that, and then pick the pictures that you want to scan in the highest possible quality. So that's really good, I'm really happy with that. And you can see that the actual individual pictures themselves, they look great, just as they did when I scanned in my other video. Um, obviously they're a little bit green here, but a, a, little, a really quick kind of color correction, I just eyeballed this one up, shows that they, they come up really, really well. You know, one thing that I noticed about this scanner, and I really forgot to mention in my previous video, is how little dust there is on the negatives. It's really fantastic, you know, if, if you, you're used to scanning film, you know that dust is a very real problem, it's everywhere, um, you have to blow it off the negatives before you scan the negatives, and then you have to spend a significant amount of time spotting the images after you've scanned them to kind of deal with dust. But because APS film, the only time it comes out of the canister is for a print, and then it's rolled immediately back into the canister for storage, it means that there's no real dust on these negatives which is just amazing. Obviously there's a lot of things about the APS format that are super questionable, uh, in particular the actual image quality itself, but it is neat to be able to scan pictures that are from quite a while ago. These negatives I've had in storage since I took them in 1999, so they've been in storage for a long time and to see them so dust free is super cool. The other thing I can see um, with these images that I've got here is that it has scanned the full film frame. It hasn't cropped them to the APS kind of setting that I took the photos at. And that's just fantastic because as I mentioned, I would much rather be able to make those cropping decisions with the full frame. And, and one of the things that the older version of the software did is you had to laboriously click and select the whole frame for every single frame if you wanted to, to scan it. So this is a fantastic update. And now I think I'll probably get back and, and scan a whole roll and, and see how that goes. So I managed to get a full roll of film scanned and it only overheated twice. And it took about, uh, I don't know, it took more than an hour to scan the whole roll, I'd say. But it, the results turned out really nicely. You know, I got this, this whole roll of photos from a trip I took uh, when I was about 10 years old to Lake Ilden and, and for a friend's birthday and we visited the submerged houses that were flooded there when they built the dam. Uh, it was very cool to be able to get these pictures, you know, off the film and, and, and onto my computer. So I'm, I'm really glad. Uh, I want to say a big thanks to Paul and Mats who provided the version 2 drivers in the comments of my previous video. If you haven't had a chance to watch that video, check it out. I'll put a link in the description. Um, and thanks for watching this one. If you enjoyed it and you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe because I like to post these kinds of esoteric sort of technology videos from time to time. And I'll definitely, you know, add uh, a further update if there are any more um, kind of new developments, uh, for lack of a better term, uh, in this APS scanner adventure. Thanks for watching. M A X.